Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about ways to handle more careful oils and reduce the toxicity, especially when you are handling solvents. Most time when we are painting, we need to use either thinner, tuppernoid or odorless mineral spirits called OMS to facilitate or liquid. Liquid does help to speed up the process of drying and also to thin the paint to do other details and it brings like a glossy look. I want to talk about a few facts about those. So if you were using thinner or tuppernoid or terebentina, you are handling something that has a lot of chemicals and basically how bad it smells equals to how toxic it is for your health. And there is also a difference between how it is fabricated. If you buy those thinners and topper noids and terebentinas that comes from hardware stores, you are really, really putting yourself at more risk because it's less pure. The process of distillation is different and it has much more chemicals. If you are going to use Terebentina, for example, there is no way for you to run away from that, like when you're going to do really thin continuous lines. Go for an artist store and buy the thin Terebentina, the fine quality one, because that means that it, ha it has gone through about three times the distillation, it's much more pure and it has less chemicals. That those chemicals are going to go to the air and through your nose and through your whole body, your families, your pets. Some people like to have pets around when they are painting. I don't really like to have mine on my lap because I don't want her nose so close to all those chemicals. Especially because she can also leak something. <laughs> and Kids too, right? They put their hand on something and they put their hand on their mouths. And you don't want that to get in contact with the inside of their bodies and it can cause several issues that I'm going to talk a little bit further in the video. So I usually go for this. I have completely cut off topernoid or thinner or terebentina. This does the exactly same work that they do. And I was checking gambling website because there was a little bit more information. They claim that from those OMS liquids, they have the one of the last chemicals in the market and that the chemicals that you ha usually have on a thinner or on a tuppernoid, they have reduced it to 0.005% of the quantity. Another fact that I want to talk about is fire. All of them are inflammable, including this one I cannot find in big jars here where I am. And it is very expensive to buy in, in small quantities. I tried to import that and I had a lot of trouble to justify and I had to just ask to send back. And to talk about how risky it is, it can get gets to instantaneously combustion. So you use those rags, those pieces of paper and clean your brush and you end up with a little bit of the product in there and that can just get on, get on fire by itself when you are not even painting. Can you imagine how dangerous it is? More to the end of the video, I'm going to talk about some options that doesn't include solvent, but I didn't have experience with them so I cannot say how good or bad this is. I want to say that this cleans the brush even better than a thinner does. It's magical, but it's not necessary either. It is also terrible for the environment. It's something that you should not be putting in the water. You should not be disposing that in the earth or any means that can get in contact with nature. It's better to take that for green spots when they, they can actually do something correct with it. Even the remains of your ink it is advisable to do that. Let's talk about the hazards to your health. You're the kids and dogs and everyone in the house, depending on how the flow of the air is in your house. So you can get lungs irritation, it can cause problems for people with asthma, for example. It can even damage with the long-term uh, work 
since you're going to probably be painting for ears, your lungs. There are some stores that I don't know if it's myth or not. They say that can even cause brain damage. This part I don't know. But eye irritation, dizziness, dizziness I already felt, eye irritation I already felt, nausea, nausea I already felt. First times that I painted and that I did use uh, the pernoid. I remember I went to sleep feeling headache, feeling this whole area burning, like the trough burning. Next day I woke up with a massive migraine. So I was looking for ways that I, I could avoid using that. Oh, it's not also? Oh. oh, it's not about just breathing that isn't dangerous. It can cause dermatitis, dermatitis. I don't know how to say in English when you get in, in contact with your skin. Your body can absorb through the skin as well. When you are cleaning your brush, you have to do so much contact unless you buy one of those brush cleaners that you can just use this whatever they have inside. I don't buy that, especially because I don't think it cleans good enough. So I always have to put my hand and make sure that I get to the end of my brush. Otherwise it starts to go dry from the from the center to the tip and then you get you get your brush ruined. In my case, I don't use thinner or any of those things to clean my brushes anymore. I use artist soap. I saw a lot of reviews on the internet and I saw that it does very well and indeed I love using it and I just I ended up making a small hole in the middle of it from always doing like circle motions and then I, I put on the on my on my hand and then I just go with the brush very strong so I can get really to the bottom of it and it has been great I really think that sometimes it helps to make the tip of the brush get better I used to clean my hands, sometimes I had to use something chemical on me to clean because I, I got uh, inked by my arm, I got inked by my face. So instead of using something bad, go with something. This is made of olive oil. It's actually hydrating. It doesn't smell good. I just leave that on the... Whatever. Well, this is a 200 grams bar. So I have been using that for... I don't know, maybe four months. I am so sorry for the rain noise, but here it rains almost every day, so I have no way to run away from the rain. Let me explain how I do work. I don't use this when I work. I don't open it at all. This is only used when I have to do continuous thin lines, like some parts of the hair. And not even that sometimes because I know how to do that without using small brushes. I usually use very old brushes that make really nice thin, thin lines. Sometimes I have to use liquid. I usually use liquid only on the details like lashes because I really need a thin ink and sometimes on the first layer. And then, every single day, to clean my brushes, I clean with this. And how do I manage to paint everything if I'm not cleaning my brushes during? I don't use so many. I paint with monochromatic looks most times, so for me it's easier because I am not going to end up with muddy colors. I end up using just two brushes at a time. I got used with that. But even when I am painting like uh, skin colors, and I'm not going to say landscapes because I suck with that. <laughs> but when I do skin colors, I, I can handle myself with just three brushes. And what I do is I clean on the pa paper. If I don't get that clean enough, I go on the color that I want to use. I put it there a little bit to get it wet. I clean again. So it kind of mixed together and then I clean again. And if it's still not clean enough, if I have some of this on the palette, then I just go there, put a little bit, and then I clean again. <laughs> and also, I do avoid mixing colors that are going to get muddy. Like, if you have uh, ultramarine, ultramarine blue mix in one point, and then in the other point you have the... Oh, I forgot the other blue. 
Well, I guess you know what blue I'm talking about. Uh, it's not British and blue. I forgot. I avoid to get those colors together so I don't have issues later on. And like that I can handle my whole paintings and I can do a lot of details. And remember if you leave your rags unattended, make sure to put it on water so it doesn't get on fire or buy one of those cans that are specific for flammable stuff. Or if you want to research what you should do before was to put them in a jar, like a mason jar, because it was with the idea that to something to get on fire you do need oxygen. But I don't know if that was really the best call to make. It was my call, I didn't research. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you like those tips. I hope you can adjust yourself to some of those so you can make a little, little less toxic the act of painting. Have a great week and see you in the next video. Bye bye.